We're not on yet. We added a couple seconds, Mayor. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, Mayor, you're live. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the work session and TID board meeting of the Las Cruces City Council. Today is Monday, January 25th. It's approximately 1 p.m. Before we get started, if you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is uh, for those of you who are joining us and hoping to see our work session of Las Cruces City Council. That'll come immediately following uh, this TID board, which is uh, the City Council also acts as our TID board of directors, which stands for the Tax Increment Development District. And so we have a few items and it could take as little as 30 minutes to finish and then we'll go on to our work session. Okay, so the first item <clears throat> is gonna be an action item. It's gonna be item 2.1, which is approval of the minutes from our October 26, 2020 TID board meeting. And I'll need a motion so and a second. So moved by Flores. Okay. Second, Abeta Stuvi. A motion made by board member Flores, second by board member Abeta Stuvi. Christine. <clears throat> this is on the motion to approve the TID board meeting minutes from October 26, 2020. Councilor beta Stevie? Yes. I'm sorry, board member beta Stevie. <laughs> um, board member Vasquez, is he absent? No, he's actually here. Oh. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Board member Ben Como? Yes. Board member Sorg? I don't think he's here. He's not here? Okay. Absent. Board member Flores? Yes. Board member Gandara? Yes. Chair? Yes. Okay, so we have two discussion items. First one being a financial update and Mr. Chris Farr will be presenting. And correct me if I misspelled that, Chris. It's favor, Mr. Favre. Chair. And actually, I believe that Josh um, Sowell is going to give the financial oh. update and then I'll give a, a current projects update after that. Perfect. Just checking to see if you were paying attention there, Chris. All right. So, Josh, I saw you on the, on the uh, participant list, but wasn't too sure. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Josh Saffel, and on behalf of the Finance Department of the City of Las Cruces, I'd like to present the financial report for TID for the quarter ended December 31st. Let me get my presentation going here. So to start off with, we're looking at the TID Operations Fund. Uh, the fund has cash and investments of $3,696,758, receivables of $7,906, and a due from state or county of $32,671. So total assets in the fund amount to $3,737,335. There is a restricted fund balance in the same amount, uh, and that is the total liabilities and fund balance. Looking at the budget and actual for the TID operations, total revenues in the fund amount to $181,105, and total expenditures are $26,867. After a transfer out of $375,000, the net change to fund balance for the fund was a negative $220,762. Moving to the TIP projects fund, uh, cash and investments in the fund total $970,609, and there is an equal amount in restricted fund balance of 970609 Looking at the budget and actual for the TIP projects fund, Total revenues are 
and total expenditures are $3,797. So the net change in fund balance for this fund was a negative $2,699. Next, we have the TID Street Bond Projects. Uh, looking at the balance sheet, we show cash and investments in the fund of $506,263. And again, an, an equal amount in restricted fund balance. Finally, looking at the budget and actual for this fund, total revenue was $623. There were no expenditures in this fund. So the net change in fund balance was a 623. And that will conclude uh, my financial report presentation. Are there any questions? Thanks, Josh. Let's see here if I can find uh, any questions. Doesn't look like so far. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Looks like we're going to go to the TID projects. Mr. Mayor. Oh, yes. Oh, that's right. We don't have. Um... Yeah, the, my little hand. Oh, I'm yeah. Gonna blue. I'm, I'm going to get some blue paint and then put it up like this. Yeah. I have to confess, I actually did work it so that the hand didn't, didn't work. So, oh, well. Copy. Gee, thanks. Yeah. That's very nice. That's very reassuring. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Saffel. I have a question. Um, I didn't understand anything you presented. And, um, and the reason I didn't understand it is because uh, the TID is, uh, covers the entire downtown area, right? I mean, that's the TID that we have. And, um, and what you presented, and it may be, you know, um, in, in, I mean, it may be, uh, yeah, maybe it's, it's, um, acceptable, uh, you know, accountability or accounting principles. But I didn't understand like where the money comes from, where it goes. Is there a breakdown with the different projects like the Amador, the Rio Grande, you know, things like that. So um, do you have that kind of a breakdown and do you have an analysis as to, uh, there's been a, co a an impact by COVID, and um, and I was looking at last uh, our last meeting October, and there had been the reporting uh, was broken down, or somehow the notes reflected that. Um, so, can you explain whether um, we can have that information, or if this is all we're going to get? We don't have. I don't know. Maybe I'm overreaching here asking for something that isn't appropriate, but I, I would like to see where the money's, um, you know, where these deficiencies are. It looks like there's some deficiencies, right? Not in accounting, but in the, the flow of money. So um, board member Flotis, what you're asking for is like, for example, if we did a project in the downtown, uh, let's say we use TID money to build uh -huh. the plaza, you wanted to see, is there any, any money left over? Uh, or if we have another project that we're trying to do, you want to see basically that more detail. Is that what you're asking? Correct. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 I would like to see the uh, individual projects. Is it broken down that way to see which projects um, have been um, profitable uh, to see whether the TID is working downtown? And I understand that there could be uh, a COVID influence, but I, I would just like to see that. And is it possible to see that? Do you work it that way or are we just left out? I mean, are we just left to our own devices to figure out where the money is, where the money is or isn't? Mr. Um, Chair, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And answer part of that question real quick and then let Josh follow up. Um, so, Mr. Chair, a board a member, Floyd, it's, I have a, a small presentation that'll be updating you on a couple of the current, actually, all the current um, TID projects that'll follow Josh's financial presentation. But I can, uh, and so that, that has some of the budgetary uh, information. Um, but uh, Josh can speak to some of the additional questions. Uh, yes, uh, um, Mr. Chair and uh, Council, Councilwoman Flores. Um, yes, um, I believe that we do have that information available. I don't have it with me right now. Um, but uh, generally what, what we present here is just a, a basic summary of the basic financials. 
Um, if you do want further detail, please let us know. And I'm sure that we can um, adjust the report to where it becomes more something more useful if you feel that, that this was not as useful as it could have been. And I'm certain that we have that information. It just, uh, this is just the, the summary format that was, was presented. Yeah, well, for me, and I, and I hope um, my colleagues share this sentiment, I, th I think that with the fiasco we faced last summer or last whatever, last year, uh, with a potential TID, non, uh, you know, uh, private, of course, not public, such as the one that you're uh, reporting on, it would just be really good to have that breakdown as part of the presentation to the entire council. And that would be my ask, my request, because we really have to understand how this is working. And, um, and my understanding um, prior to the, I mean, I think October, the October report did show that uh, things had gone down, um, but, um, and somehow it was covered in our, in our minutes, but, um, so yes, Mr. Sapple, and, and, and uh, that would be my request for the uh, finance uh, department uh, for us to fully understand um, how this money comes in and how it flows and how the TID really works. Because, you know, bottom line is bottom line in this business. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Dr. Martinez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, member of the board, Flores, thank you for those questions. Um, as Mrs. Seifel mentioned, um, we can further adjust this reporting. So what I'm noting is for us to have the, the updates in the financial component by project and by month. So you can see the trends uh, as well as the summary. Um, one of the things that I, wanna, I, I do want to um, share with you all uh, um, as a reminder is the source of funding for the TID in downtown is a GRT, is a portion of the GRT that is generated by the businesses in the designated area. So we can, we can also bring a map so that helps to, um, to set the conversation for the geographical area that we're talking about. And, and we appreciate the input to continue to improve the reporting. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. Mr. Mayor, if I may, uh, Dr. Martinez, thank you for that because um, it would be good to see, I think uh, if we had that breakdown or that, uh, as you say, the trends and summaries for the different businesses, uh, we would be able to compare that with past performances and then we can see um, whether COVID has had an impact uh, and what that impact would be and whether we'd be, it'd be recoverable. Um, and because I don't, I don't think it's a, um, I don't think it's a gold mine, uh, you know, with infinite, sorry, you know, infinite resources. On the other hand, I think that it can be sustainable and beneficial financially to the cities, and it'd be good to see all of that. So thank you, Dr. Martinez. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. And if I may add one thing, uh, Dr. Martinez, I, I believe there's a sunset clause or a time period that that ends with the state. I wonder if that might also want to be included, just to give reminder to council of when this expires. Mr. Chair, uh, thank you for, for that additional piece. Actually, the sunset took place um, a year ago. Uh, Leanne may have the exact date. And, and um, when you see the summaries by month, uh, you're gonna see a big drop in, in the income or revenues, should say, from when we had the state share to when now only have city share. Um, it's about $18,000 a month. And that, that has been pretty consistent. Uh, surprisingly, the, the, drop, uh, the drops in revenue by month throughout the, the public health restrictions have varied greatly by month by month. Uh, but we will certainly bring those to you. Um, we can uh, bring also a, a brief history of the months during the public health uh, restrictions for you to see and then the bigger picture on that. Thanks, Dr. Martinez. Does the county's portion sunset or does that stay on like ours? Um, Mr. Chair, I believe it continues until the ending life of the of the TID. Okay, 
The only you know, and, goes away is, is the states. Okay. I also failed to mention that with us is Commissioner Shannon Reynolds, who's our ex official member from the county. And I just wanted to welcome him as well. And so Commissioner Reynolds, if you ever have a question, um, if you could, I, uh, right now, uh, apparently Zoom, uh, the function to raise your hand is not available. So, and I only get to see about three or four on my screen at one time. So if you have a question, just raise your hand through the reaction. You know how they have the little hand or whatever, you know, raise your thumbs up or whatever if you have a question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate the introduction. And uh, if I have a question. Oh, you're in San Francisco. So, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm on top of the, the, the uh, hotel. I'm on the top floor next to the pool. You know, okay. watching clouds dissipate from, from the bay. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't have any. I think, um, I think uh, Dr. Um, Martinez is correct. I think we're in it for the, uh, the term of the TID. I don't think we are sunsets at all until the TID uh, sunsets, as far as I know. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, Vice Chair uh, Gandara has a question. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I um, I appreciate um, Board Member Flores's comments. I think what would be helpful is to see sort of a breakdown from year to year, right? Um, and, and that would be for me really helpful. Um, and what COVID impact we do get on a monthly or I don't know how frequently, but um, Ms. Barbara De Leon is sent is forwarding um, our GRT and the TID GRT is part of that. So that probably information would be helpful. It, and then I would recommend that to, to staff that we meet quarterly. This is a, a committee that we don't meet our board that we don't meet often enough. And it takes um, us, you know, some, it'd be helpful to have some refreshing, you know, just refresh your course every time, just a few, a slide or two that sort of gives some history and some, you know, would be helpful, Josh, if you would, Chris. Um, and then I have a question, Josh, in the slides that you listed, assets and um liabilities does the amador get listed as an asset on there and as they because right it's our we own the building um and how how is that working when they put forth leases um pay towards the leases i imagine that that gets calculated somewhere in this in these um slides if you will I would have to check into that because I believe that looking at what was presented, it was primarily cash was the record asset. So um, the Amador is most likely a capital asset, which was not reported in those um, funds. Yeah, I'd like to see that and see a running tab of where we're at with the lease. Um, and how does that get calculated in terms of its worth, right? Uh, net worth or worth, if you will, um, something that we probably should should know. Um, and any any buildings in that area, right? That that is that is it would be helpful um, to me because I would assume that that some, means something to us, uh, and uh, as part of the 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 TID. So um, thank you, Josh. I appreciate it and I'm looking forward to Chris's presentation. Okay, I don't see any other questions. So, Chris. All right, Mr. Chair, let me um, share my screen. I've got a brief presentation to show everyone here. All right. Um, are you able to see that in? Yes. There's a bit of a bit of a lag here, so I'm trying to get it to go into pre. Here we go. Here we go. Sorry, there's a bit of a lag here on my end. So okay, so. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, members of the board, this is Chris Faber, Interim Downtown Administrator in the Economic Development Department. 
I'm going to give you an update on just a couple of the projects that are going on in the TID and using TID funds. Um, and then myself and public works staff will be available at the end for questions. So the first project up is parking lot seven, which for everyone's point of reference, it's the parking lot right behind the Rio Grande Theater. Um, this will be um, a project that includes some landscape redesign and uh, rebuilding of the bathrooms. Um, it is a TID funded project. The budgeted amount was $488,000. The bid process um, was due on December 8th and currently purchasing is working to select a vendor for that. Um, estimated timelines are a breaking ground in mid-February um, with an estimated completion date of June, 20, uh, June 2021. So just take a few months once the project gets going. Next is the Compo Street redesign study. Again, this is another TID funded um, project for uh, redevelopment of the Compo Street area. Uh, the budgeted amount for this fiscal year is $400,000. And then I've got some updates and next steps here. So currently Molson Corbett and Associates is the vendor who's working on um, the study. Part of what they're looking at is an evaluation of uh, cultural impact, architecture and landscaping, lighting requirements, traffic control and ADA compliance. Um, in the, just a couple of weeks ago on the 12th, we had um, a stakeholders meeting and that consisted of residents and business owners from the area, city staff, members of ACD and DLCP. Um, and some of the comments that came from that meeting were a sense of making Compo Street feel more like it's a part of downtown both from an aesthetic standpoint and from a pedestrian um, accessibility standpoint. Um, there was a lot of discussion about trying to find ways to soften that uh, west side of the road, which has a lot of fencing and, and um, walls and barricades and stuff like that related to the post office and the courthouses. So that was the comments from the stakeholders meeting. And, um, Part of the next steps will be for a public meeting to be held in March or April. Um, after that, Moles and Corbin will compile a report with all the recommendation and comments and that'll be due to the board um, in May um, once a final design is approved for that project. Uh, it'll be about a six to eight month time frame for the design to be completed. An estimated construction cost from that point moving forward would be about $2 million. And finally, last project we're working on um, is an online permitting system. Uh, we did update you on this back in October. Um, we um, had to put that aside for a little bit while we worked on some of the COVID grant stuff. I'm not sure why there's an extra zero there. Oh, we go 20,000. Yeah, there we go. It just looked kind of funny to me. Um, and so what this will do, it'll give us an online permitting um, application process for the plaza. So when people want to rent the plaza, there'll be a, an easier online way to go about um, filling out those requests. We actually have a training that starts up tomorrow. We're hoping to get the user testing phase completed in February with a potential go live sometime in March. But I just wanted to remind the board that we aren't taking permits for the downtown and the plaza at this time because of the COVID restrictions. But the idea is that when we are able to do so, we will have this new permitting system, which will make it a lot easier for city staff and for those who are um, requesting the plaza to get through. And that's all I had. Those are all the projects currently using TID funds. Again, I'm available for questions and staff from Public Works is also available for questions. So thank you. Thanks, thanks Chris. Let's see if we have any, oh, that's right, Ken. Um, <laughs> you, should, yes, Mayor Pro Tem or um, Vice Chair Gondara. Thank you, um, Chair. Thanks, Chris, um, for the update. Um, I wondered if you could also update the TID board um, in, rela in relation to 
the um, the time, the parking study, um, the time parking, or where or how will that is connected um, to the TID, I think that's an important um, area to update. And then the arts and cultural district, I think that's a, also a piece of, of the puzzle. And I, I'd love to see some some remarks and, and actually an update at here at, in the TID um, presentation. Thank you. Sure, Mr. Chair, uh, Board Member Gandara, I'll, I'll speak to the ACD real quick and then I'll turn it over to Dr. Martinez to speak on the parking enforcement. She's been the, the point person from ED on that project and she has more details on that. So regarding ACD, um, they are currently um, have a project that they're using CIP funds for, which is the Mesquite District um, Lighting and Wayfinding Study. Um, we're working with Bohan in Houston on that. And it's sort of a, a, two, a two pronged approach for the area, one is um, wayfinding signage and gateway signage for the boundaries of the district, um, as well as different wayfinding signs and kiosks within the Mesquite area, directing people either to other places in the district or to other areas you know, in the downtown area, say a sign from, you know, Klein Park pointing in the direction of the Rio Grande Theater, that type of thing. Um, currently we are, and, and before I continue, the other side of that is a lighting evaluation study that's also going on uh, to determine if there's additional lighting uh, needs and concerns for the Mesquite area. Um, with regard to the signage, um, we have seen some preliminary designs that the ACD um, has been reviewing um, for both kiosks and the gateway signage. Um, we are hoping to have a follow-up meeting with um, Bohan and Houston and the ACD board to um, move a little bit more forward on those. Um, we had to forward them some um, traffic uh, requirements with regards to signage near roads to make sure that all of our proposed gateway signs and kiosks don't um, impair any sort of uh, drivers uh, from a sort of a, you know, a right of way standpoint. So there's lots of lots of different things going on with that particular um, group. And uh, we're hoping to get more information from from Bohan and Houston here moving forward. I, I spoke with them recently, and they're, they're just compiling some of the information the board provided them in our last meeting. Um, and again, we can have more information made available to you by our next board meeting, the TID meeting, because we should have a lot more, a lot more developed by our next meeting. So I'll let Dr. Griselda speak to the parking unless you had any additional comments, uh, board member Ganda, regarding the ACD. I don't, Chris. Thank you so much for that update. Okay, we have a question, question from uh, board member Ben Como. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh. I'm I'm sorry, but I I oh, did sorry. or um sorry about that. to update on the sorry Councilor Bencomo to update us on the um, parking committee time parking that sort of thing. Mr. Chair, um, member of the board, uh, Gandara, we have um, gone through the SAC process. We have selected a vendor, and we are in uh, final negotiations of the contract. That contract will come back to City Council for your voting. At that time, we will all, uh, also bring the parking enforcement um, as a discussion item for you to help us um, with direction of, of timelines for um, from when we set the the option for timing uh, versus uh, charging. So that's, that is in the works, uh, but you will see it as a city council item in the near future. Uh, you're muted, uh, Vice Chair Gantara. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. What about um, Dr. Martinez, the parking um, lot survey or and, and those kinds of things. I guess I'm just trying to find a way that you can update the entire TID board related to the activities um, in the TID area. I don't see another another opportunity where we have these kinds of, unless there's a work session specific to that. Mr. Chair, uh, Member Gandara, um, for the 
So uh, I believe that um, if if it's more appropriate, we in the next TIB board meeting we could have all other downtown projects updates. What we prepare for this meeting was TIB funded projects, and that is the reason why we don't have the other ones that that you're asking um, that we usually. Um, discuss in the parking committee meetings. Um, so if that's, that's the, the preference from, from the board, we could do that for our next meeting. For, for the parking garage, uh, just briefly updates that we, um, that have been in discussion items with the parking committee is the feasibility study was completed um, and um, at this time, the next step would be for funding to be determined um, for the next stages of, of the project. And so um, I don't know if you want us to go in further detail, uh, Member Gandara. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Martinez. Um, it would be helpful, I think, I just, again, I as I said before, I don't see a an easy, uh, in the past, I, I think Mandy um, has updated us not only on TID funded projects, but projects that were happening in within the TID that I think would be helpful to the board to hear and understand and just get an update. I know you're not prepared to do that today. I'm okay with you bringing it back, um, you know, in the next time to update us with, a, you know, part of a presentation I, I, or that we decide um, that it's something that needs a, a work session. Thank Madam, you. Or, Madam, thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair, um, board member Gandara, thank you for that input. Um, and and we'll we'll figure out the best way to bring those updates to the to the entire body uh, as per your request. Okay, anybody else? Oh, yes, uh, we're never been coming. Sorry about that. Yes, that's okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chris or Dr. Martinez, can you remind me are we not paying for the shade structures through the TID? Mr. Chair, Board Member Ben Como, that, that, that was, um, as of right now, that is not the case. Um, that was something we had presented as a possible future priority at the October meeting. Um, and so we were planning to discuss uh, at an upcoming TID meeting um, future priorities from the TID. And that, that was on that list presented in October. But as of right now, there is no TID funds that have been dedicated to that project. Okay. Um, yeah, I definitely don't remember <laughs> October at this point. But um, do we, I mean, is that going to be up for discussion then at the next TID meeting? Or at this point, the shapeshifters are being, it, it's through the city of Las Cruces. Mr. Chair, Board Member Bencomo, it's something that we can certainly look at, um, and you can look at with with um, using TID funds for that. But as of right now, no determination has been made. But we can certainly put a list of potential priorities together, included in our presentation for the next meeting, um, so the board can start to figure out how to prioritize um, any upcoming any upcoming projects. Okay, thank you. Thanks, uh, Board Member Ben Como. I'm glad you reminded us of that. So I, I do recall uh, the meeting. In fact, it was like a little bit over a million dollars, and it seemed like uh, we could use a TIP money or we could try to find some other monies. So, Chris, is it fair to say that this project has stopped and there's no movement on it? Mr. Chair, yeah, currently at this time, after the presentation back in the fall, um, uh, where the architects presented some of the different options, I know there was some discussion about an art element to it, some, a solar component to it, um, but there hasn't been any other um, 
requests made to the architect to incorporate those. Uh, I think at this point, it was a matter of um, determining a funding source before moving forward. But Dr. Martinez might have some more information on that if I'm wrong. Mr. Chair, that, that is correct. What, what Chris mentioned, that's, that's the um, current status. Um, that discussion took place before City Council and one of the options that was um, considered was uh, through ACD. We, we staff have discussed that with ACD and um, unfortunately that's not one of, um, through the discussion of other priorities, that's not one that, that made it to the list uh, according to the funding available through ACD. And um, at this point, we will have to decide, uh, as, as Mr. Favor mentioned, um, next, next update, we're planning to bring those priorities for, uh, for TIP board to act upon and for you to define based on the funding available, what are those uh, items that you, you want to fund via the TID. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the biggest contribution or revenue into the TID uh, took place when, when we had the state share uh, coming through and therefore um, the funding that we have is an accumulation of, of previous periods rather than fast growing currently. And so with that in place, we would bring the, the funding available uh, currently, the projects that, that are in the works that would um, require funding from TID and then the, the uh, priorities that, that we have discussed up to this point for you to select which ones would make it um, via TID versus other funding sources. So, Ifo, uh, you know, this probably took place right around the time you were thinking of coming here. So, can you, uh, obviously, with COVID and things have slowed down and we don't have social gatherings, but had this had that not been the case, uh, we really wanted to have some type of a shade structure by this coming summer. So can you make this a priority to kind of make sure that, that council has some information, even if it's, um, and I don't know, I would think, Christine, it's allowed to have this disclosed at a city council meeting, uh, just some type of an update, because that's something there that, you know, I think council really wanted to have uh, this, this shade has eluded us for two years you know, and, um, and uh, it's something there that, that really is something not just the council wants, but, you know, the public wants. It's, it gets pretty hot. Um, I can't remember when you, we, we moved down, you moved down here in September, I think, didn't you? So you haven't, you haven't felt the July, June and July heat. So I know you're always there nice and cool in Utah, but uh, welcome to Las Cruces in uh, July and August, okay? Uh, board mm -hmm. member Flores, are you waving at me or you have questions? Yes, I'm waving at you. I've got nothing better to do than to wave at, at you. Um, thank you, Ms. Mayor, and thank you for asking Mr. Peely to uh, look into this because we did have what I wanted to share, and I think a lot of us already know this, but just to refresh everybody's memory, is that we did have a presentation last fall. Um, I believe Councilor Bencomo was there and I think Councillor um, uh, Gandara, um, maybe it was another one, but anyways, a presentation, or it wasn't last fall, it was, oh my gosh, when was it? I really lost track of time, but we did have a presentation by a firm, architects, um, or- It was a TID board meeting. Was it a TID board meeting where they did the pre No, no, it was open to the public. It was at night. It was on the second floor. We, we saw one at the council, too. I mean, at the, at our one, it had to have been the TID board, I would think. That's yeah. Well, anyway, but the, uh, there were a lot of people from the public. There were a lot of people from the public there. And, um, and so I think that we owe it to ourselves and definitely to, the, to our public, to the residents, um, at least an update as to what's going on. Are we moving forward or not? And yes, everybody wants a structure. And then we had, you know, it was where we all voted for the structure that we liked the most for um, whatever reason, you know, either the design or the practicality. And I remember, yes, it was uh, Mayor Pratim Gandara 
who, or maybe I'm confusing it with another one, uh, who requested solar panels. There was questions about solar panels. So um, I think we really need to move on that. I mean, there's a million and one other things you have to move on, but um, that, that one seems to have been left dangling, you know, in the, you know, in the wings. So I'd like to see uh, some movement on this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Is that uh, Board Member Vasquez? It, it is, thank you. Uh, and I don't have my camera on just because I'm driving, so I, I don't want to uh, apologize for that. I don't want to put myself in danger there, but I do just have some uh, questions and comments if now is okay. Sure, absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, yeah, so I um, thank you so much, Chris, for that presentation. I just have a, a couple of quick comments and questions. Uh, one is I'm excited that that parking lot and those bathrooms are, are finally getting that much needed remodel. Um, and I know those bathrooms get heavy use by the public during um, farmers market and other downtown events. And so um, uh, was just going to ask you about the capacity there. Are you are you increasing the size of those of those restrooms, Chris? As part of that um, of tearing the, the old ones down, um, I know there's. I, I always see lines uh, there when there's big events. So I'm just wondering about the design on those. Mr. Chair, uh, Councilman Vasquez, I'm going to let Public Works answer the question specific to the redesign of those bathrooms. That they've got more of the technical information on it than I do. Okay, thank you, Chris. Dave or, or Tony? <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Thank you, Board Member Vasquez, for the question. I couldn't get the, the unmute button uh, to show up to, to answer, but uh, to answer your question, Board Member Vasquez, and for the record, David Cedillo, Public Works Director, uh, we should be increasing those. Uh, I will have to confirm the design, but the last time that we looked at it, there was to be more capacity to address the usage in that area. Uh, what I will do is follow up with staff to get the exact number of those bathrooms for each, the women's and the men's. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, yeah, I just don't wanna miss that opportunity to do that now. I think that was one of the challenges with the current public restrooms there and the big events that happen is, um, uh, you know, they get they get filled up pretty quickly. And I know with more businesses that are inviting more folks uh, into our downtown, I think it's just a smart thing to do now to make sure we have uh, bathrooms that are adequate for the, the population of people will be serving, the, especially during those large events. So thank you for, for paying attention to that. <laughs> um, Chris, I, I have another question slash request so you know i've honestly been surprised at how white those walls on the post office have been able to stay for so long um just because you know they're they're kind of a perfect canvas there for for art one way or another and with the redesign of compost street i don't know if that includes like a one percent project for public art um that i think we're supposed to have on 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 most of our capital projects now um, but I'm just wondering, uh, one, does, does that project have that 1% for public art? And then two, I would love to maybe approach the post office or, you know, the federal government, um, to see about using that, the outside of that wall that encloses what were once all those, all those great, um, uh, USPS trucks that, that were in use when we still had a, a mail center hub in Las Cruces, but, Anyhow, that big wraparound white wall, I think, would be an amazing place to tell the story of Las Cruces or have a local artist interpret some beautiful part of our history. And it could be another, you know, big cultural attraction and artist attraction for uh, for the city. And, uh, and it also would add that public art component to Compost Street. Um, so, yeah, that's that question is, is does that have a public art component uh, included uh, as part of that one percent for public art? And then two, um, you know, I guess if council or others are in agreement, you know, in, in terms of uh, approaching the post office to see if we could use that exterior wall for, for public art, if that would be possible. Mr. Chair, uh, Board Member Vasquez, uh, I'll 
I'll um, double check or, or have Public Works comment on this. I don't believe at this point because the money was just for a, a study at this point. I don't know if there was money allocated um, for public art uh, at this point. I think that would probably be um, at the construction phase, but I'll, I'll let uh, Tony, I see he turned his microphone off. I'll let Tony comment on that. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, Board Member Vasquez, at this point, the project for Campo is just considering uh, different aspects of planning and design for Campo, for pedestrian access, um, lighting, um, art. Funding for art has not been dedicated for horizontal construction. This is usually set aside on vertical construction as part of these projects. Um, so at this point, there is no consideration. Well, I don't want to say consideration, but art has not been part of the the discussion with the consultant right now it's just for uh, room and access along campo well that is something we can definitely include in the final design of the project as we move forward so i appreciate the comment yeah and that was uh, tony trevino speaking uh, deputy director of public works oh sorry here oh okay Th thank you tony thank you chris yeah i mean how cool would it be to unveil that project that street with a big public art component uh, attached to it. I think that's when we have to kind of think about uh, just not just the streetscape, but what we want to do in building community. And I think that would be a, a really great new attraction to the downtown um, as having a really great public art component. And it would draw pedestrians to Campo Street anyway, which I think would be which I think would be good for um, some of our uh, businesses that are located there anyway. Um, so thanks for thinking about that and for giving it some thought. Um, uh, and then lastly, I just have a question about, uh, this wasn't on your project list, but this is a question I had asked previously, um, I, actually probably about this time last year, and I think we funded those downtown kiosks uh, that are operated by Visit Las Cruces in, with, using TID money, and one of them was broken. I think the one at the visitor center was, was not operational. And so I, I know during COVID, we really don't probably want people touching screens and stuff right now anyway, but I, I'm just wondering if you could give an update on the kiosks in, in addition to them being operational, if, if they have been um, in use and maybe perhaps we can put those at a later discussion for a downtown work session, because I'm really curious to see if those actually worked out for us, because I know there was a vendor cost, a maintenance cost, we had to go through the vendor to update them. It seemed like a lot of hoops to jump through and a lot of money attached to those things that um, I, I wasn't sure how how it was if it was going to work or not. But um, but first, I guess the question is just: Are the kiosks uh, working now? And if, and if so, have they been shut down because of COVID? Chris Favor, for the record, uh, Mr. Chair, Councilor Vasquez, unless uh, Dr. Um, uh, Martinez has an update on that, I'll, I'll have to get back to you on that. The last I heard, they were they were looking to get that repaired, but I don't know what the latest is on that, um, unless Dr. Martinez has an update. Mr. Chair, uh, Member Vasquez, um, to be 100% accurate, we'll send a follow-up on that via email. Um, the one that it's placed in Visit Las Cruces is, is uh, used quite often. Um, it has been repaired. It, it, it took a while for us to finalize those repairs, but it has been repaired. The, the data, um, that would be the piece that we'll have to follow up with you all um, to, to understand the, the usage and, and what those, um, the preferred options are. There, there is, um, um, I'm gonna defer this piece to Rochelle Miller Hernandez, our director for Visit Las Cruces, uh, for her to expand, expand into, specific to the kiosks, um, a, a new app that uh, will be coming live soon, if, if that's okay, Mr. Chair. Sure, absolutely. Thank, thank you, Dr. Martinez. I, I appreciate that. I know when, uh, at the time, um, direct, former Director San Filippo kind of sold counsel on this project. He promised a lot of things, and I just want to make sure that we're getting an accurate update in terms of what the cost of these machines have been, if they've been, if they've been running okay, or if staff's been encountering problems, um, how much we're spending on that monthly vendor fee, and 
I, I just think it's important because I know, uh, like, like I said, he they were sold a lot of things on that, and I think council really wanted them to work out, but it'd be great to just get an evaluation looking back at it, I think, a couple of years down the road. So thank you, Dr. Martinez. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Board Member Vasquez. Anybody else? Okay, sounds good. So I believe that concludes the updates then, huh, Chris? Yes, that's all I had, Mr. Chair. Okay, so if there's nothing further, entertain a motion to adjourn the TID board. Need a second, I mean a motion and a second, please. So moved by Flores. Second. Okay, motion made by board member Flores, second by Vice Chair Gandara that we adjourn. Christine? This is on the motion to adjourn the TID board meeting. Board member Abeda Stuvi? Yes. Board member Vasquez? Yes. Yes. Christine, can you hear uh, board member Vasquez? Yes, I heard him. I was waiting for board member Ben Como. Oh, we didn't hear yeah. that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Apologies. Board member Sorg? Yes. Board member Flores? Yes. Board member Gandara? Yes. And chair? Yes. Okay, so the TID board is uh, adjourned as of 1.52 p.m., and just stay tuned for a minute or so while we get the work session information ready and then we'll begin that as well. So just stay tuned, don't leave. And we'll be ready in just a second. Minute.